episode of many. We will be talking about a ton of exercises to help you tone and define the boute. And Nicole is going to start us off with a plethora of stretching warm-up exercises for her boute. Okay, so if anybody knows me out there, I need to warm up to warm up. Um, warming she up just did that before we started taping, <laughs> by the way. I did. So, um, one, injury. You, you don't want to get injured. And two, um, you know, it's, it's a way of um, stretching the body, getting the heart rate up, getting the blood moving, getting the blood flowing. So, foam rolling, if you don't know what it is, we're going to tell you what it is. There's a couple different, um, you know, pieces of equipment here that you may see at your gym. You may see this basic white foam roll. It comes in blue and black. Um, white is kind of like, hey, total beginner, you've never done it. Then you graduate to the blue and then the black. The black is a little bit denser. And then you've got the balls, which are great to get into like your shoulder complex, could get to your lower back, all that kind of stuff up into your neck where it's a little bit tight and it's hard to get with that foam roll. I love the lacrosse ball. I actually carry one in my purse. It's great for the glutes, okay? Because this really doesn't get that deep. This is mine. It's called a rumble roller, and I love it because it's got little thumbs and it gets in there really deep. So as a competitive athlete, like I love deep tissue massage, and that's a huge part of my recovery as well. So for me, this doesn't cut it. This does. So again, for those of you who are just starting out with foam rolling or you, you, know, you can't handle it, that's fine. Start here, and then later on you can graduate to that blue or that black foam roll, which is a little bit denser. So... Normally, you know, you're going to start here and you're going to foam roll. You want to do every part of your leg. So your quads, um, again, you can have this foam roll or this short one here. I love it because I actually travel with it. I've taken it with me on trips all over the world because when I travel, I get super tight. So I kind of just roll up and down my quad. I start at about the hip or the pelvic area, and then I roll right to about um, just above my knee. I don't want to hit the bone. And then when you feel a spot that's pretty tender, like a hurt so good, ideally that's where you want to hold it and get that GTO response. That's a goglio tendon organ. And by holding it, you're actually going to lengthen it. That's a knot. So to break up that knot, you kind of got to hold that pressure and let it kind of gradually release. So again, and it may take several times and a lot of consistency. So honestly, think about it. You beat yourself up every day. My clients ask, will I ever get better? You know what? I consistently teach Pilates Reformer. I consistently take hot yoga. I consistently foam roll. And you know what? I'm consistently tight, but I also get a lot of relief when I do this and I incorporate this in regularly. So for me, I move better, not just in the gym, but on a daily basis. So front of the leg, and then you want to get that notorious IT band. This is one muscle group that a lot of people are tight. We use our IT band to balance and walk. So I'm going to lay on my side, on my forearm, make sure my body is in one straight line. A lot of people end up kind of curling up in a ball because they're in pain. Okay, that's fine. But ideally, you want to try and stay straight. And again, and this, this I'm keeping a good face, but this is killing me. So um, going to just above my kneecap. Okay, breaking up again those adhesions and when I find a tight spot kind of holding it so you can hit both sides I'm not going to do the other side I already hit it and then for the glute here you want to sit on it so I kind of put it right here and then you find that spot and for some people this may be too much so again yeah. remember like we, we kind of been saying here not everything we're doing is for everybody you can start so, with this if that yeah you can start with a bigger ball um get in there. Even like a lot of times I use med balls with my clients and that helps get in there. Same thing with the med ball. The heavier the med ball, the denser the med ball, the deeper it's going to get. So some of my clients are only doing a four or six pound med ball where oftentimes I have other clients, including myself, doing an eight or ten pound med ball. It really gets in there. So again, here's the reason why you want to warm up. If you're, in, if you're doing any type of workout and your muscles are tight, how are you engaging that muscle? If it's, if it's locked up tight, it's going to pull from some other muscle group, okay? And then you wonder why, well, this hurts and this hurts. You know, you need to really kind of wake it up. And a warm-up, a dynamic stretching warm-up is great, but this foam roll is really going to get in there and break up those knots. And my glutes need it. I have a um, tight ass, not literally. I guess literally. <laughs> literally as in, like, I got She's knots. She's got a tight ass. ass. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm always rolling, you know, booty duty. Part yeah. of booty duty here. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get up. We're going to get started. First exercise we're going to do is the squat on the squat rack. 
So we're starting with the squat, and Stacy's going to be demonstrating this. So I'm going to let her go ahead and squat. She's actually got a great squat. So I'm an asthma certified personal trainer, and you know, corrective exercise is huge. And so I don't care if my client is competing in a bikini or a figure show, um, or if they're 60 years old or they're you know 11 years old. The first thing I'm looking at is their form. I am not going to give them load if they have you know the knees that cave in. You know, her knees are not caving in. Do a bad one, knees in. So yeah, I will not that bad. That's like pretty obvious. But you know, I see a lot of trainers out there loading weight with clients, or I just see a lot of people in the gym. And then um, another one, put your knees back. Good form because she's got great form. Um, heels up. I don't know if you can even do it. Not even that bad. But you know, people are squatting and they're lifting their heels. So the whole thing is here. You when you squat, she's totally exaggerating. <laughs> but anyway, your heel is what engages the glute. Okay, and it. it on your toes is a sissy squat, okay? So there is there is a squat like that. But again, depending on, on the person and what their limitations are, their injuries, and actually how they move, I always assess them first. So I'm assessing her uh, and letting her know she looks good, so I'm ready to give her weight. So you that's where... ass or... I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> just in in a second, you're gonna, your ass is going to be super tight. So that's why the foam rolling that I did earlier is going to help when you're tight... How do, you, how do you correct the knees going in? Okay, so that's where, that's a whole nother thing. But that's why I say this foam rolling, the dynamic warm-up, getting the assessment first is important before you load the weight. So let's go. All right. So when you're doing squats, like I said, remember, more weight isn't uh, always better. Um, you, again, you want to get that form first. And sinking down nice and low. So she's going to do a regular squat. And we have that bench there. So she's tapping it. So again, you can put that bench there so that, again, she's coming all the way down. Her weight is back in her heels. Her knees are behind her front toe. Okay. Her elbows are driving forward. Her eyes are on the horizon. She's squeezing her scapula. Okay. Down and up, nice and controlled. She's doing great. So now, where are you at as far as challenging? You want to make sure, too, are you challenged? So on a scale of 1 to 10, where are you at right now? Probably about a 7. Okay. 6 or 7. So you're on what? Like rep 6, rep 7? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want you to do um, 8 more. Okay. Down and up. So ideally, same thing here. When you're working out and you're doing an exercise and you're wondering, oh my gosh, I've been doing squats forever. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot of reasons why you may not be getting results. Number one, are you tight? And maybe you're not engaging those muscles. Number two, are you challenging yourself enough? You know, are you putting enough load? But again, there's a lot of women out there that are bottom heavy that I see they're loading the weight on and they want a smaller ass. Those women don't need to keep loading the weight on. They're going to get a bigger ass, okay? So a lot of that is going to do with diet and cardio and consistency. And so when I say diet, I, I really hate to use the word diet, but nutrition. So let's, let's, let's use the word nutrition. Okay, so next exercise. Next exercise is going to be jump squat. So it's a plyometric movement, and you're going to demonstrate. Oh, I'm doing it now. I'm next. Okay. So I'm just going to keep you in this area. So essentially, you want to make sure that your client can squat, like Nicole made sure I could squat. You don't want them adding load or additional movement if they can't at least squat. So these are all kind of variations and ways to progress basic movement. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that basic squat, like what I was doing, on the step and what she's doing right here. Keep going. And we're going to turn this into a plyometric movement, driving the body upward. I like to do like a little jump shot with it sometimes. It helps people get the right idea of the movement. So jump. You ready? Okay. Go. Push that weight through the heels, through the glutes, through the core. Keep your breathing in check and in flow with the movement. Inhale, exhale. Lots of variations to this. She's touching the floor. You can shoot that basket. You can keep something like a medicine nice ball. Have a ceiling I can reach. A medicine ball in your hand and hold that at the chest. I often have people do, you know, carry, even hold some of the guys too. Are you counting? Yeah. Three more. <laughs> hold something bigger in their hands while they're doing this to make it a lot harder and you can stop. Good. So, with plyometrics, we often superset with uh, heavy lifting, and then we add in the plyometric piece. We don't typically do a set of 16 or 20 and then plyos. We usually superset it with something. But then there's hit high intensity. Oh, I love doing squats and then going to the squat challenge. Well, yeah, I love supersetting yeah. it. But then high intensity interval training, too, you can do plyometrics and all this. Mix it up. Help. So, like, if that alone is not challenging enough, Pair that with this, yeah. and you're going to be, you're gonna be able to not just your heart, but your legs are going to be on fire. So then uh, the next exercise we're going to go over is the Bulgarian split squat. Well, 
You can use this with weight or not. And I'm going to demonstrate this one. And this may be too high for me. I'm going to drop this down. You want to make sure that your form is in check with this. This is tricky, but it's a huge movement because it covers your whole lower body, typically. I like to set it up on the floor. When I have my clients do this, I make sure that they set it up to where they drive all their energy through the heel. But I'm going to let you go ahead and talk through it so I can actually do so it. So again, focus. very important there, that 90 degree flexion. So drive up and down. So again, here, a lot of clients, if they don't have that form, and say, for example, why don't you show me some bad form? Okay, so bad form would be... Okay, so, and that's where... So, for example, I'm a bikini competitor, as, as is Stacy, And so, Pilates, Work. yoga, foam rolling, you know, you got to put Lifting it in. Lifting up the heel. How? You're exaggerating big time, but that's good. Right. <laughs> so, for example, though, people do lift up their heels. So, again, you're not engaging your glute. Okay, you're not, you're not going to be effective. Everybody's pressed for time. Be effective with your workouts. Do it right. Keep going. And again, you can, you can add weight. Dumbbells here. Do a bar balance. Weight, do a barbell. Bell. Whatever you feel like you're comfortable with, balance-wise, too. But the main thing is, if, if you have bad form, most likely you're, you're tightening your hip flexors, tighten your chest. Where, what, what do we do in life most? Okay, so again, that's why it's so important to kind of open up the body. It's okay to do some dynamic stretching before you do a lunge, okay? It's that static stretching at the end that you want to save that for, not before, but to actually do movement, get the blood flowing, open that up. I see a huge difference when I do that with my clients. I have so many clients that come in from work and they're super tight, have them do a couple even just reverse lunge taps, all that stuff. So next exercise. This. Curtsy. She calls it a curtsy. I call, I call it a Miss it America lunge because I trained Miss Illinois for Miss America. So you can call it a variety curtsy. of things. Bowler's lunge. Yeah, curtsy. But she's going to demonstrate it. There's a ton of ways to do this exercise. Uh, doing it on a step, doing it on left the floor, step. and doing with weights, without weights. And again, you want to make sure that your form is correct. So she's got kind of a double movement here where she's squatting and then she's taking it back. So this variation that Nicole is doing where she's adding a squat off to the side is a little bit more advanced. You could take this up a notch further by adding dumbbells. To make this one step easier, you could take the step out of the equation altogether and then you can take out the squat and simply tap it. And that makes it a little bit easier to manage. So all in all, these four exercises that we've done for you the squat, the Bulgarian split squat, the plyometric move, and the curtsy squat or the Miss America can all be done together in one exercise. There's a variety of ways you can do these things do depending, on, depending on what your specific goals are. Uh, typically you could do everything for your four sets of 12 if you were really getting very basic and then maybe do the plyometric piece for a timed 45 seconds. One example. There's many ways, There's so to, many do, ways, many do ways to do this. Tell us about her. Okay, so if you love these tanks, which we do, um, Rachel Flint created this line, and you can find her at fitlikeflint.com. She's actually one of my teambodybuilding.com teammates. So, yeah, she's go. awesome. She's a whole bear, uh, line and lots of variety. So, that's Nicole. That's Stacy. See you next time.